people plant bad seeds. Well, I was like still doing my own thing. I was in a, a sh shitty contract at that time. We all, we're not perfect humans. I'm not gonna do nothing today because I'm feeling like this. No, I'm gonna figure out, I'm gonna keep myself going. Welcome to the Law of Attraction Secrets podcast. I'm here today with a very special guest. Somebody who I've been so excited to bring to your ears. The name itself means breath. Like, wait till you hear this the first breath. This name is someone you will know. This is a name you will never forget. He's got a song out recently with Chris Brown. He's done some amazing things that you will not forget. He's a spiritual guru and so much more. Welcome to the show, Tyler Yahweh. How we doing? How we doing? How we living today? <laughs> Boom. Welcome, King. How nah, are you? I'm good. And I'm actually, it's a pleasure to be here right now. So I'm so happy. Especially you're here. a great like you. Like, mm. It's amazing how much, like, your energy got me to be here today. I was like, yo, we have to make this happen. 100%. I've been so excited. Like, when you meet people in life, it's because you resonate on a certain frequency, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody that we meet, we draw into us through a frequency. So anybody that's playing in a lower frequency going to attract that kind of lower level to them. That's it. <laughs> that's so it. Like, we stay away from those lower levels, you know? <laughs> Low vibrations come... And go though, you know, we all we're not perfect humans, mm -hmm. and we all put ourselves. We we have to go through those vibrations mm -hmm. to figure out where where's the highs at. Like, how do we get to that high level? And um, these days, you know, it's so hard with all all the things going around, especially social media. People wanting to be seen, people wanting can't be themselves. Like, I was in this tea shop the other day, and uh, a girl was talking about her hair. And she was like, I was putting on wigs every day, and then it was just showing me fake confidence, like. I was like, whoa, that's something crazy. Like a lot of people mm. just have fake confidence mm. these days. It's like. You're right. Shit. That's a really good point. So I wrote a book, my book I, that I just gave mm -hmm. you, Be It Till You Become It. Because I don't believe in fake it till you make it. I believe in becoming the energy you want to be today. Exactly. So when you put your fucking wig on or when you put your thing on, it doesn't give you fake confidence. It helps you become the version of you. If you see it correctly, the version of you you want to be. So when I was... In my darkest, right? Mm -hmm. And you asked me before we started. It really. Powerful. How did you? How did you start? How did you start your spiritual journey? You know, where did it start? When did it start? This is a crazy one. So, I'd always read The Secret. At 15 years old, I read The Secret. That's like a decade ago, and yeah. I was like, I love this movie. I was like, I, I, I love this book. I love this movie. I want to learn from these people. I put it to bed, I didn't think about it for a few years, picked it back up, marked off some pages, picked up Napoleon Hill, picked up Joseph Murphy and a few other books. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really go into it and apply it. I'd read it, but I didn't apply it. Fast forward, I get married, I have a baby, I end up as a single mom, and all of a sudden, the world comes crashing down around me. I'm overcoming a drug addiction. Bear in mind, it was a bad cycle. I was a webcam girl. Like, OnlyFans is tame compared to the shit I did. Like, that now is acceptable. Back then, it was like, oh my God, this like young girl from Oxford. Like, what, you think you're going to go online and show yourself like that? It was like so looked down upon by the world, right? So I was this girl. And I was feeding it with the drugs. And then the drug addiction was needing to be paid for. So it was like this big cycle. And all of a sudden, I'm propelled into this illness. So I'm bed bound with a kid trying to raise him. And I can barely get out of bed. And I have this autoimmune disease. And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, save me. Literally, what do I do? I stop them one day. And I think, I'm listening to Denzel Washington. I remember this moment like nothing else. I'm listening to Denzel Washington. It's playing in my ears. And it's saying... This is only temporary. It's a motivational speech. This is only temporary. Like, you're going to get out of here. You're going to go on, and you're going to be something amazing. You're, and I'm like, come on, you're going to get out of this. You're going to get out of this. And mm -hmm. I remember that moment because right before that, I wanted to fucking leave this earth. I was like, I want to get out of here. You're done. Done. <laughs> like, what have I got to live for? And I looked at my son, and I thought, I'm going to be a role model for you. I'm going to be a role model for you, and I'm going to go on and be a role model for somebody else in this world. And I start listening to the voice of Denzel Washington over and over and over. And every day, I started getting 1% better. 
I then end up writing my captions on my Instagram, hiding and masking what's going on. And underneath it in every caption are words of wisdom. So instead of writing about the clothes I'm wearing because I was trying to get back into making money by fashion influencing, mm -hmm. I'm writing captions. So I've got all these books and I start applying them and I start putting these captions together and all those captions turned into my first book. That's fire. That's super fire. Little by little, I built into being a motivational speaker. I now fucking speak on stages alongside the guys in The Secret. They've all been on this show. There, my, I speak on stage with John Asaraf. He's one of my close friends. Michael Beckwith's at my house all the time. All the guys that I used to look up to. They're your peers now. They're my peers. Yeah, I coach they're, with they're, it. You know the feeling. Yes, definitely know the feeling. You just like, yeah. I, yeah you, so I can tell you my story. Yeah, please. I uh, want to know how you found so, that. So um, I was in Florida, you know, chasing mm -hmm. this dream and actually making it happen. Uh, shout out to the owners of Rolling Loud. They like helped me a lot in my life. They let me open up for every show in Florida, up and down from wow. Orlando, Tampa, Miami, Jacksonville. It was every week there was a show going on with artists that are popping now from like Travis Scott, G Easy, uh, ASAP Rocky, ASAP Mob. Um, you can name it. Post Malone, actually. I opened <laughs> up for Post Malone and end up being like, now I'm assigned to Post Malone. Wow, full so, 360. Yeah, again. it's crazy. And mm -hmm. that's where I met Dre the first time. And um, I ended up like being around so many different people, like going down to Miami, mm -hmm. being around Birdman and getting like knowledge from him and seeing the lifestyle. Like it was like, bro, it's like right here. Like everything I dreamed for is right here and I'm finally there. And he was trying to sign me at the point, but I didn't, we ended up going on tour with this. I ended up going on tour with this artist named Kasky. He was signed to Cash Money. And um, shout out to him because he brought me around that whole situation. And out of nowhere we went on tour i came back and it was really nothing for me unless the like being in the streets or going to jail or being dead and a lot of my friends were going to jail and i was the one like yo i just gotta get out of here and um i got a reading from this girl got a reading from this girl and she was like you need to just go to california right now like you need to drop everything and just go and i literally the next week drove my i told my friend i was like yeah i'm about to fly out here like i had like probably like 5k to my name like 6k to my name like around that and i was like yeah, i'm about to just fly to la he's like well how you gonna get out of lax and how you gonna do this he's like bro i'm gonna just come with you let's just drive and this is my best friend he's out here right now this is my best friend to this day and um we drove to all the way to LA in like two days. It took us like two days to get, like a day and a half to get there. We just went straight through, through Texas and everything. Wow. And the moment I got here, we had an Airbnb for like a month. Like they stayed here with me and we just, I had connections already. So I was getting in the studio, I was getting us connected with free clothes, a lot of stuff. And um, the moment that, that moment he was like, yo, it's time, I gotta fly out. I gotta fly back to Orlando. The homie's like, yo, we gotta go. I was like, yo, just drop me off on Venice. I had a skateboard and a and a, a suitcase. Oh my Dropped me God. off on Venice Beach, and then I had I just figured it out from there. And fuck. So what ended, happened then? Ended up linking up with Dre London again, and well, I was like still doing my own thing. I was in a, a, sh a shitty contract at that time. I signed a crazy deal, but I was still like getting around French Montana, ASAP Rocky, ended up doing a song with both of them. It probably never come out, but like it was the moment, like Harry yeah, Fraud was yeah. in there, Danny Boy Styles was in there. Mm. It was in Paramount, we are in this big ass, this is my first time in a crazy studio, like me just pulling up and I'm just like started freestyling and Danny Boy Styles like, yo, what is that? Go in the booth right now. Then ASAP walks in the room, he's like, yo, who's that in the, on the booth? He hops on it and French hops on wow, it. Wow, what it was like, Johnny. It was like a whole, ro like a, I'm like, yo, this is the moment that I've been chasing and ended up just like getting out of that shitty contract. And then I was still doing, I did the first Rolling Loud in Oakland. It was like the first Rolling Loud in California. And I was booking mad shows myself, doing things myself and everybody's thinking I'm signed, but I'm not, I'm just out here thugging it, wow. you know, like getting it together. And... One day, uh, I'm like performing, like I'm throwing like weed in the crowd. It's probably like a, not even a thousand people, like 500 people in the crowd. I'm the first one to go on, and but I had it turned. Like I was crowd surfing, giving mad energy. People was there, you know. But I get, I guess I put it on my on Instagram, and my manager now seen it on an Explore page, and he was like, "Yo, 
yo, like, are you signed or anything? Like, what's up? Like, what's your situation? He's like, I work with Post Malone and Dre London and everything. I was like, yeah, I already know Dre. That's crazy, you know, like how full circle everything was. And then Dre calls me, like, the next day, like, what's your situation, bro? What, what's your situation, bruv? He's, he's, <laughs> both, anyway, he's also a really cool British friend of mine. Yeah. He's super cool. He yeah, he, he's like, what's your, what's your situation, <laughs> bruv? And then I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm free agent. He's like, don't sign to no one, pull up right now. And then ever since then, he just showed me his loyalty and respect, the whole team, you know, like. Wow. They just was there for me. And then it's been gone ever since that. I never stopped, never looked back. Boom, and now look at you with your latest song, which we fucking love. Shout out to my bro, Chris yeah. Brown. City of Dreams. I mean, can we just like, we're just gonna drop a bit in right here where you guys can just like fucking go listen, watch this. Watch the video too, the video is crazy. We're gonna insert that, it's so fire. <laughs> It's so good. Okay, so wow. Now you see what we're talking about. That song is so fire. But the laws of attraction, manifesting what you want and then just being in your dreams and like really being in it and mm. like making it vis so visual that you it's around it? you. Did you like decide this before you got there? Like, did you visualize it? Always visualize everything I do. Like mm -hmm. I've, since a kid, I've always, if it's from skateboarding, like cause I skateboard, like if I want to land that trick, I visualize myself landing it and rolling off mm. and, and then having that, like feeling that feeling of you landing that trick is like, wow, like mm. I did it. What's, what's the next mm -hmm. one? Like, let's keep accomplishing our goals. I love that. That's so fire. So, I believe that when we visualize it, we receive it. Like when we pray, there's a quote and it says, whatever ye shall ask for in prayer, ye shall receive. Okay, so when you pray, but you pray like it's already yours. Like you're saying, thank you for this dream that's already fulfilled. So I was showing this before we went on. So I brought it with me. So before I go to bed every night, I write out my dream that I'm doing right now, the thing that I want to accomplish. And I put it on paper like this because I have like scroll paper because it just to me is more. It's, it gives it a natural vibe. It does. Like it's so natural. It's so real. So then on it, I write my dreams and then I put that underneath my pillar. So then I say, this is such an amazing, simple saying to say, and you can say it anytime. It went viral before. It will probably go viral again. And you say, <laughs> <laughs> thank you that this problem is already solved. And then you put it under your pillow. Thank you that this problem is already solved. And you're visualizing it. Thank you that this problem is already solved. So your dream has already come to pass. Your dream is already your reality. So I just do that every single evening before bed. Do you write? Do you journal? Uh, I, I write. Well, I don't write like that, but I go to my phone when I wake up and just start putting all the goals and all the things that I'm thankful of. And I keep it on the same page. So it's like, all right, this was, you can still uh -huh. use whatever one you want. So, so you should one up it and write it. So when we write by hand, physically, we put a pen to paper. It's magic. Yes, because we activate the science behind it. We activate the ventrolateral prefrontal cortex of the brain, which helps. Say that them. again. We activate the ventrolateral prefrontal cortex. Whoa, how do you remember all that? I just did a TED talk on it, darling. Oh, man. <laughs> I would fucking hope so. <laughs> The science behind it means that our brain brings it to fruition faster because we're putting a pen to paper, we're making it store as a memory as we write it down. Pen to paper over typing helps activate certain parts of the brain as I was going into that activate behaviors, which help you to your brain to say, oh, that's already happened. That goal has already happened. So it stores it as a memory. It doesn't know whether it's real or not. It starts to bring people, events, and places around you into your reality to help you achieve that goal faster because it thinks it's happened already. So we do it by hands. If you can, one up. I will. Start I will. It's not about can. I will. <laughs> yeah, know? baby. I love it. You know? Yes, you got it. Thank you so, for the thank you for the advice. You really need that. And that's a, a big reason why I came on this podcast to get some gems and jewels. Like you, you drop real gems and coming from a woman too to give a man advice too. That's amazing. That's a power. And it, it shows your spirit and your mother nature that you have. Thank you. Well, you're very inspiring. Okay, I want to go on to you. So, Law of Attraction, how did you find out about it? Um, it was a shroom trip. It was a shroom trip at a very... I was young. I was probably like 15. Yeah, same. 15. It's something about that uh, age. I was like 15. And um, honestly, I was like... I was at a college party and I was, I was on probation. I was on probation at this time and I had to go to boot camp the next day. Oh my God. And then I had to do a bunch of other like art programs and stuff, but like I had to go to boot camp the next day. And um, I was like, freak it, I'm going. Like, I'm going. Like, I'm going to this party. I'm going to get lit. Like, before I, 
I don't care what time. I'm going to get home right on time. Uh, had a shroom trip. I ate some shrooms, smoked some weed, had a little alcohol. And then I'm watching Hey Arnold, right? Like, oh my God! <laughs> I'm watching Hey Arnold. Like, <laughs> I remember this. I remember this the day. Like, Hey Arnold was playing while it was like a little kickback, college kickback thing. Yeah. Like, and um, I'm watching Hey Arnold. I'm hitting a little, a little piece. I'm smoking some weed, and I blow out the weed. And Hey Arnold says something so deep that I didn't realize. I'm like, yo, this show has this many deep meanings in it. I didn't know they had scenarios and everything. Uh -huh. I don't remember what he said, but it put me in a place in my brain. It just went way back. Like, wow. my life just went like that. And um, it started showing me things about myself in the future that I, I, I'm living now. I'm obviously, I'm actually living it now. And it's crazy that I always go back to those moments. And it was a good and bad trip at the same time. To me, it was good. It was bad to other people because I didn't know what I was. In my brain, I was going, it was, everything was perfect. But on the outside, everything was chaotic. I was wild. Whoa, <laughs> did you make it for your probation time? Oh, man, yes, I did. I actually went home, put on some gym shorts, and then literally had to get, like, my mom drops me off out there. You had to run straight to them. Like, they, the well, the military guys, whatever they were, the police, they, they're sergeants. They make you get out the car and start running. And you go and doing laps and you're doing push-ups. And it's like a whole day. Oh, my God. Your life has changed so much since then. Oh, of course. Of course. So, okay, what's your why? Everybody has a why. I always say to people, without the why, there is no will. What, my without why will. is to, to, like, my why I do it because I love people so much. And mm. I love energy. And I love connecting with the world and showing people that we are mm. all one at the end of the day. And um, it's trying not to, like, I just want to be that positive energy for the world. And I feel like I'm that breath of fresh air for them. That's so beautiful. So through your music, through your words, you inspire people. And that's your aim is to help people to feel elevated, mm -hmm. to feel lifted. So do you write things purposely to inspire? Or is that like through the words that you do in the world? Uh, I think it's mostly the vibes that I give off. Because like, I, be, I can make a sad song and you, make you still feel happy. It's like, all right, it's okay to be sad. It's okay to be in mm -hmm. these, have these thoughts because I go through it too. You're not the only person. Wow. But I'm going to uplift you with the amazing frequency of a beat that's going to mm. make you feel like it's summer at all times. Like City of Dreams. Like City of Dreams. And you should go check out my album, Heart Full of Rage, too. Mm, like, I have it. I, I just downloaded it. You should, check, like, you should check it out. It's a lot of good vibes. Can we in put it. the link below so you guys can go and see it? Because that's good vibes. We're all about good vibes. Yeah, it's here. all about it. And, um, just, you know, just having good, like, when I'm in a studio, it's all good energy. I don't bring a thousand people in the studio. Like, it's no, like, you're not coming here to bring your negative energy in this room and this well bubble of us making this magic mm. because music is super sacred. It lives mm. forever. It does. Yeah. I love how you protect yourself. You went on to a really beautiful point there. So, around us, we have an aura. Mm -hmm. Our light is within us. Think of it like a candle flame. And... If somebody is around you, they literally... The flame dims. The flame dims if they're a negative energy. Likewise, if you are around somebody positive, your light comes up and it starts to bright and glow and shine. And all of a sudden, everybody around you feels uplifted by you. So, that is how... Smile. see the smile? <laughs> That is how we're even around each other. Mm -hmm. Because it's an energy of love. It's, an, it's a frequency of a vibration of abundance. Mm -hmm. So... We have to protect our light with our life. Mm -hmm. We can't let anybody dim it. You know, I say to somebody, choose the people around you carefully. You're an average of the five people you spend time with. Choose the five people that you spend time with the most careful you ever make a decision in your life because they will either diminish your light or they will activate it. You know, the five people that you keep around you, like the, you know, when I, when I see somebody, I know who they're around. Mm -hmm. I can literally describe from your reality, your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions that you do every day. And I can also describe your five best friends. <laughs> I can tell yours are good. <laughs> <laughs> I have a really good, fr I, I have a lot of good friends around. And um, one thing I do, I motivate all my friends, even from my childhood friends, our friends with, with like my current friends now, like they're all like wow. friends and they're all connected. We have group chats where they all hang out. They might end up hanging out more like like one of my, my best friend that like that's out here is with my best friend right now no. that drove me out here. No. <laughs> yeah, they're hanging out right now. That's so beautiful. So it's just like the, you, are the light. you know, it's like 
bringing people it's like bringing people together that they didn't know like oh i didn't know this person was supposed to be in my life you know like i didn't know this person was gonna like this value this adds value to my life so much and it's bringing me up to this high level That's and um, so every all my friends you know they're all cool they're all uplifting and if they're going through it i'm there to uplift them if i'm going through it they're there to keep me on my path too that's so beautiful. You have to. You have to protect your energy. Because every day, we are either going to light somebody's candle or we're going to blow it out everywhere we go. And we, we definitely don't like. If, if I feel any type of vibe in the room, it's like, oh, I'm out. I'm not trying to be around that energy at all. Well like, done. Well done. But I, this is why I love that you're like so fucking young and so knowledgeable and wise. Oh, thank you. Like it's so beautiful because it means that you can inspire the millions of people that you reach and go out there and let them know, like make better decisions, like be around people who are good. Because so many people get caught in that late night cycle where they party, they're out, they're about around people who pull them down. Then the next day, that bitch is up there fucking nailing it. What the fuck? are you doing yeah like i know i see people i'm like the reason that i'm where i am the reason that you are where you are is because we take our craft seriously mm -hmm. we put our foot on the accelerator and we fucking go one speed one gears go yeah go <laughs> right and you believe in it okay i want to like take this into a, a place where i just really want to know this answer because it's really interesting someone's sitting here today and they're like okay tyler you're amazing now but what have you been through tell me a time in your life when it was a breaking point for you like some moment that you had to overcome and how did you overcome it um honestly i don't fear nothing in life so it's like if it happens it's supposed to happen and i don't sit there and dwell on it i just keep going and like I can have it on, on the back of my brain and I can have it there, but that's the fuel that's going to keep me going. So I stay away from the fear of just going through a breakdown of like not being like, oh, I'm not going to do nothing today because I'm feeling like this. No, I'm going to figure out, I'm going to keep myself going. I'm going to keep myself like, all right, I'm a dis like, it's not a distraction, but I'm going to make something happen in front of my eyes and speak my power to like reality, mm. you know? So that's one thing that I always do. Like no matter like I was going through something a couple of days ago. Like yesterday actually. And like I woke up like, nah, you you're not going through that. You know, yeah. like you not don't go through that. What are you doing? Get your brain out of that. Like go go get it and mm -hmm. out of nowhere your phone starts ringing different thing like mm -hmm. this money over here that mm -hmm. money over there this mm -hmm. opportunity over mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. it's because of the the mind that you keep you know 100 percent. well they say you can take everything from me yeah but the one thing you can't take is my mind well, you can't take it from me that two million year old bit of hardware is the most powerful thing that we have put me in a jungle bitch i'll come out in a suit <laughs> <laughs> is it like for real <laughs> like for real put me in I don't care. Like hey, you can put say me, that again. Say that again. Put say me that. in the jungle, bitch. I'll come out in a suit. Ah, <laughs> hey, that's wise. That's wise words from that's Natasha. That's huh? Yeah, I love it. It doesn't matter where somebody puts people like you and I, because we truly know we have this. Put me in a dark room. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna bring light. You mm. know? So, that's so beautiful you well, know, you're, wait your name the breath let's just go there again like i love it uh yahweh everybody i know it's a little blasphemy that's why i changed it, the like words up a little bit but it still means the same thing to me it means uh, it, like i pray to god every single day i'm not calling myself a god i'm saying that i'm a the same he made me so we are i can't have his last name too like like i'm making it I'm making it to show people that we're all a fresh breath of air. We're all God. And, I, and when you're saying I am what I am, mm -hmm. you're making that happen, you know? And that is I am yeah. that I am. I That's am this. I am mm -hmm. that. Like, it's it's what you want in this world. It's a big playground that exists that we don't even see that's all mental. I agree. Every day when we pray, we just had someone on. And you'll see it, like, really soon, maybe even before this episode's out. It was all about prayer and how you can pray into your life what you want. And you pray, not just in the bad times. So people tend to be like when they're dying, they start, they find prayer. And it's like, yo, you should find it in the gratitude. Mm -hmm. Find it in the good times. Every day I walk down the street, even when I'm with my son, we have like this little practice. What are you grateful for? I'm like, give me 10 things you're grateful for right now. I'm grateful for my body. I'm grateful for my mom. I'm grateful for my son. I'm great, whatever it is. Can you imagine a life where you effortlessly magnetize your dreams to you? Financial success, the love of your life, the family of your dreams, and everything you've ever dreamed of at your fingertips. 
with my approach to manifesting, I have a practical method where you use the power of your creative words. It's called scripting. We write in the past tense in a certain way to attract all our desires to us. I've done this. I met my husband in three weeks doing this. I help myself heal twice. I help myself get rid of a rash on my body. I have helped myself to elevate myself and get myself out there to so many people. I've changed my bank account number. I've added two zeros onto it. I have created abundance like I could never dream of. The most beautiful homes around the world. And you can do this too, like so many of my clients are currently doing right now. The success stories speak for themselves. I want to show you how to do it. This is for somebody who is ready though. Don't even bother coming unless you are ready to transform your life. If you feel like, oh, I'm on the fence. I don't know. None of this shit really works. Then baby, it doesn't work. It doesn't work for you. This works for somebody who says, I'm ready. I'm ready to try something else. Try using the power of my words. I want to learn in a curriculum. I want to be in a group with other like-minded individuals and I want to win. This is for entrepreneurs who are ready to go to the next level or maybe get out of corporate America and go to the entrepreneurship world. If you're ready, come and join us inside the Scripting Society and I'll see you there. What are you grateful for? Like, I'm grateful for our friendship. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that I'm able to spread the knowledge about the law of attraction, that God's called me to do something so great so I can use my voice for that. No, you have to. Right? So like, gratitude is the key to more abundance. In fact, the truth is, I'm gonna teach you something crazy now. Oh, so. Gratitude, you heard that. I was telling you that earlier today. Yeah, you see? <laughs> yeah, babe, exactly. Gratitude is everything. Okay, gra you do gratitude every day, obviously. Oh, yes, it. obviously, I have to, like. Gratitude is in me. I think it's something that I naturally do without even knowing I'm doing it. It's just something that I have to give back to the world. But you can tell in your energy, like the way that you walk, the way that you talk, like you ain't no fucking loser. You're fucking powerful. <laughs> like you're, you're a walking sensation. I, you see, I see people all the time who are like stars, but their energy is like loser. And I'm like, what the fuck happened to you? Where did you lose your gratitude, right? A loser is someone who is not a winner. A winner is someone who lives in a state of gratitude. Mm -hmm. A winner is somebody who feels abundant and worthy and grateful every day. So when you're writing down now, let's take it even further. So let's say when you're writing with your pen, okay? Mm -hmm. With your pencil. In fact, I'm gonna get you a journal. No. I'm, I'm gonna get you one like that, with that paper. With that paper is very, yeah, that paper. It's very treasure. Mm, I'm gonna get you one with that paper, with the energy. Thank okay, you. so inside of it, you're gonna write, this is the story of Tyler Yahweh, and here's what happened. Then every day, instead of always writing in the present tense, you can still do that. Write in the future. Write in the past tense mm. about the future. So I became the da 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 da, I sold platinum records, I did this, I did millions of this, I did da 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 da, whatever it is, all the things <laughs> that you already did, right? As though they're already yours, and you write it in the past tense, but here's the trick. You add in the power of gratitude. I'm so grateful that I became the number one platinum selling artist and won 20 Grammys by the time I was 40. Oh, that's fire. That's okay, right? Yeah, that's amazing, man. We all, that's all we speak, <laughs> that's what we speak into existence at all times. Yes, okay, so like writing it down and you're going there. You're like, I'm so grateful for this abundance. I'm so grateful that this happened. I'm so grateful. And I felt so grateful when this happened. You just believe it into existence. That is the power. Yeah, you speak into, you speak into the heart right now. Like <laughs> she's going off right now, guys. I love it. Okay, right, I wanna talk about love. Love's one of my favorite topics. I love love. You do? Love is everything. What is love to you? Uh, love can be through your family, your friends, a loved one, your soulmate. Uh, love is everything. You can love your, your pet. You can love your life. Love is something that we need to spread more. Mm -hmm. And uh, love to me is a, a, it's just, it's joy. It's light. And sometimes it might hurt. Sometimes it's, it's a bunch of things that, that's in love that is just a emotion that gives me, it, it makes me, it helps me make music. It helps me get up and enjoy my life. Mm -hmm. And helps me enjoy the breath. I love the breath of air that I, I have that in my lungs mm -hmm. when I wake up. So love is everything. Have you ever been in love? I'm in love right now. Mm. When you feel love around you, do you feel like it unlocks more things in your life? Oh, definitely. I think love, 
it can unlock a lot of things in your life. And uh, one thing I, I feel that love, like people get confused now these days is lust and love. My friend just said that today. Ooh, I want to talk about that. Lust and love are so similar. Yeah, that's, It can also be puppy love. Like my first love, I thought I was in love with him. It was infatuation. Infatuation and obsession too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like with love, I just love the fact that you can, I just, what I get from love is that joy from that person or whoever it is. It's my mom, my dad, my nieces and nephews, my sisters, my brothers, mm -hmm. my friends, my family. That's the love that I look for. The, the love that's going to bring you up, not love down. That. Love that. Do you believe in soulmates? Of course. A hundred percent. Thousand percent. Like... So like our soul, like when you're a soulmate, like you, we lived in so many different past lives, and we always end up back to mm -hmm. each other, and we go through it t mm -hmm. to each other. Mm -hmm. Like, so I believe in soulmates all the way. So I think that we we come into this world like with a soul family. Mm -hmm. That like we're gonna find our best friends who are part of that soul tribe. Mm -hmm. Like, and we're gonna reconnect with them. Sometimes we don't even reconnect with them. Sometimes they're on the other side of the world, and we haven't done the spiritual work to be able to. Hit it again. Yeah, because it's a magnetizing force, right? So we are magnets. We're magnets to everything in our reality. So when I look around me, I have magnetized every person, every event, karma, good or bad, to me. It's through what I am putting out. You are not what you think. You are what you think you are. She's dropping gems today. Inside of you is who you are. Like, if you wake up and you have that day, and we're all going to have bad days, by the way. Of course. But if you stay in that place of negativity. It's going to be, that's going to drown you down. Because now it becomes one day into two days into one week into one month of a negative attitude, which is now not just becoming a one day thing that was a problem. It's now becoming your temperament, which is becoming your character, which is becoming your personality. So you know when you walk into people, you're like, Yo, that person is so grumpy all the time. You know, something happened to them once upon a time mm -hmm. and it lingered. Instead of them letting it go like water off the bird's wing, when bad things come, when shit falls on you, when somebody throws something, when someone says something negative to you, you've got to let it drip off your wings. You got, you got to let it like go. Like the bird does. That's yeah. how they still fly. Mm -hmm. You're like the bird. <laughs> what do you deal with? Like, how do you deal with hate? Yeah, we all have hate. Oh, oh man, hate? I don't even look at hate because it's like this a form of love in that hate. Like you love me. Like mm -hmm. you hate me so much that you love me so much that is you you got some hate or enviness or jealousy. And that's a trait that I stay far away from. Mm -hmm. I don't read my comment. Like I don't like if it's like hate comments, I laugh at it. Cause it's like you don't even know me. Mm -hmm. You don't know me at all. So it's like that shit is funny. I'm going to take it as a joke. I'm going to take it as it is. Like yeah. it's just a word that's not hitting me at all. Yeah. I don't take it I don't take it to my heart or my soul. You can't at the level you play at and the amount of people that you reach and the empowerment that you give off in the world and who you are, you couldn't let that hate get to you. Mm -mm. Like no. I remember going through a dark time a year and a half ago where suddenly it was like this my ex put out some fucking lame video which was like oh natasha's this she's that she was a webcam girl i was like sweetie i fucking talk about it hey man like, it, that means that man is jealous of you and whatever he was going through in his brain that i, I what i call that is bitch like tendencies <laughs> 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 yes, but they have no class of sophistication. They just literally project their fear onto you. Onto you. So and it's that just insecurity. like it doesn't it doesn't work like that. If you're a real player, you're going to you're going to let that go and let it be and let you, let that person live their best life. Mm. Always wish the best for a person. I never wish the worst. Like I don't want nobody to be like, "Oh, I want you to go through this after me. You did mm. this and that." Nah, I want you to live your life. Mm. I want you to enjoy it to the I want you to manifest the most like have your kingdom, have your, be a queen, be a king, whatever you are, just enjoy your life. If we don't like, I'm just stay far away from you now, but I'm gonna still root for you from that mm. far away distance. That's beautiful. You know, I wish every ex listens to this. Not my exes, your exes. Whoever is listening right now, <laughs> your ex, your ex, listen to this, send this to your ex. <laughs> Cause your ex needs to hear it. I would say to people, I am the best ex you wish you ever had. Oh yeah, you know? I can see that because you you probably, like, if you're, one of your exes called you right now just to talk, 
you probably sit on that phone for hours just to like make sure that person don't go through that situation ever again and give them the best advice and the best energy and love. But I'm gonna keep my distance from you. Mm. Don't think this is gonna like mm -hmm. this is something in I there. I just did this exact thing. You already read it. Yeah. You already knew. It's, I I said to my ex, I said, you're welcome to come over and talk. And we slept in separate bedrooms. I said, we keep my distance. And now you go back home. And that was a once in a year that you were able to come and see me physically in person. But the rest of the time, you can call me on the phone. You call me on the phone. I'm there like, for you. FaceTime, whatever. I'm going to answer. I got you. But just uh, give me a step away. Give me your, your boundaries is over there. 100%. You know? I just, I know that when you have a bitter attitude towards an ex, it says everything about you. Oh, it says everything about you. Everything. Like. You see who people are, by the way, when you break up. You don't know who they are till you fucking break up with them. <laughs> that first week of not being with them, I just went through a breakup. I'm like, oh, I see who you are. Hey, I, I'm going through a slight breakup right now, but it's just like, we still, still got that energy where we can be around each other. And we're not gonna like, we're not taking it that route, like at all. I refuse to take it that route, she refused to take it that route, but we're still gonna show each other love no matter what. See, that's beautiful. And that's the main thing is that you keep it with so much love, no jealousy, no bitterness, which usually comes from one of them. One of the parties in a relationship, usually someone does it. And then the best thing to do is just, when somebody sends you a message, any ex, and they try to give it heat. I send, I'm sending you so much love back, babe. I hope you're okay. I hope you're okay. Yeah, like, I just, <laughs> I'm like, I hope you're actually okay. Like, I know you're going through something. For you to say, like, I walk out of relationships with no tears. Because I've already left that with so much love. When I moved house, I left love in my crib. I left so much love as I walked out. I was like, I love you. And I pray that the next person who walks in here falls in love and conceives babies in here. I, like, I leave so much love wherever I go because it abundantly comes into my life for the next one. You know, you, what you give out, you receive. You receive. That's what karma is. Yeah. <laughs> what, you give, like, what you give out, you receive for sure. And we do have bad things happen, by the way, because that's what life is. Life is ups and downs. It's a roller coaster, you know, and you're supposed to enjoy that roller coaster. Like, have fun, you know. You're going to get off that ride soon. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah might exactly. vomit a few, you might vomit a few times off the loop-de-loops <laughs> and turns, but fuck it. Keep going. I love that. Okay, give me some words that you wish your younger self had. So today, are you the guy that you wish your younger self had had around? Um, No. Not there yet? Oh, not even close there yet. Like, well, when I, when I grew up very, like, I grew up very fast. So, like, I was, I've been on my own since I was 15 years old. Really? Yeah. Living on your own? You was getting it. Hustling. Wow. Figuring it out, you know? Like, wow. I got kicked out of my house for, you know, being a degenerate. And um, that's out of respect. I love my mom for doing that because it made me the man I am today. Wow. So I had to grow up very quick and... Um, I love it. I, my younger self, I'll tell him like, "Yo, be you, <laughs> be you. Keep doing you because you made it. You made me who I am today. Mm. I still feel like I look at myself in the mirror. And you see my, I see my young self still. I still look in my eyes and I see that young Tyler. You know, it's so beautiful. But by the way, we needed to go through those things because they shape us, like you just said. Yeah, it shapes you. you if know? I didn't be the girl, the, the young, dumb version of me, I wouldn't be the wiser girl I am today. You wouldn't know. You, like, what, like why, why want to know everything right away? Like, we'll be, it'll be a boring life we live. If we know everything right now, like, if I knew everything right now, we'd be bored. i will be trying to fly to space or try to start, like, learning how to levitate everywhere if I knew how to, if I knew everything. Where do you think we go after we die? Um, we're, our physical, like, our physical is gone. Our, our spirit and our soul, it, it serves the universe. It stays here. It's not on earth. It goes everywhere. We can come back to earth or we can go back to our, our spiritual planes, you know? So it just, to me, that's my... That's my opinion. A lot of people have different opinions, but for sure we go to a spiritual realm that's here because I talk to my ancestors and they they protect me. When I when I do my breath work and I do my meditation, like I I sit with my my protectors who got my back, you know, like Did I send you a meditation? No. Nah. Oh, I have to send you one. <laughs> you just made me see it. I'm going to send you one where you step through a portal and meet your twin self. I'm going to write it for you. Okay. That's what I do for my very special friends. I create meditations for them. I'll, I'm, I'm definitely down to try it. Yeah. Shout out to my brother, Lucas Max, too, because he taught me breath work and... 
that really changed my life a lot when I learned breath work. Like, do you do, do you do the? Yeah, like, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it gets I lay down, so high. Lay yeah, down, yeah, you get so high from it. It's amazing. It's a natural high. Yeah, it's a natural high, and it, we don't realize how much we have around us once you get into that part of your brain. Yes. And you, you discover that part of your brain, it's going to freak you out at first, but then you're going to understand this is a life that is around us now that's helping us create. 100%. That's helping us bring our visions together. You know, meditation, not only is it proven to help your immunity and help you better your own well-being, your mental health, your physical health, meditation is the translation for who you want to become now because you decide it in the conscious realm i want to be this i want to be this i want to be this but when i meditate i quiet my mind it goes from the beta state of mind where we are now talking mm -hmm. into alpha which is a slower state of mind and into theta and then when you're asleep delta and so what it does is and you know all of this but what it does is when you meditate your brain quietens so you're able to impression new seeds which will grow like the acorn into an oak tree and so you impression into your subconscious mind during being in the alpha state of mind or the theta state of mind, if you can do that, this new vision of you. And it's really interesting when you're deep in meditation, you'll have one thought that will take so long to think about. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You try and move on to another thought, but you're like, still you stay, you on stay there. You stay there. And it's because it's like, you're, it's that, it's like dream state of mind and you're moving through it and you're visualizing this version of you and you're feeling it that is how we imprint it deep into the subconscious mind that is how we actually manifest mm -hmm. a new version of us that's how we change our dna at a bio molecular level <laughs> yo she needs a degree <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know what? I was actually considering because I fucking dropped out, and I feel like I dropped out at eighteen. I get, I like, get a. Well, I didn't even. I have left you school. Get, yeah, you're already gone, baby. Yeah, I was like, I was like, why well, I need this? I don't need this school. Like, they're not teaching me nothing right now. Like, like teach me about energy. Teach me about how to make more money. Like, wow. teach me where to put my, really put my money, you See, know? I wish they taught this in school. They didn't, they're not in America. No, I don't even know anywhere uh. they do. Like, I'm <laughs> dreaming of them teaching in schools about energy, about things in the world that we want to feel. Because this is the amazing thing. I'm thinking about going back and doing a PhD right now. I'm considering yeah, going hey. to go and try and get that to have a doctrine so I can be like, I'm a doctor. You can do anything through Christ that strengthens you, so. Mm, I love that. But it's about finding time. What's time to you? Time is unlimited. Like, while we're here right now, we have nothing but time. And use it while it's here. Because we don't have a lot of time in this body. But after our spiritual goes, we have as much time as possible. You can do whatever you want. You can stay on this earth or you can go and hang out with the real spirits, you know? Mm. That's how I see it. I love that. What's your superpower? Um, I think things before, I always, oh man, I, my superpower is pretty, I think it's a, uh, psychic, very psychic, wow. you know, um, I'll call somebody and they're like, bro, I just thought of you or I was just about to call you or I'll say something and then that'll pop up. And, um, I've been trying to tap into it more and more. It was just like, what I, what is it like that gift that God gave me? as being that you know i speak a lot of things into existence mm -hmm. and that's a that's a big power that we have and we don't realize it so i just be careful of the power of my tongue mm -hmm. you know like whatever mm -hmm. i i speak mm -hmm. i say it and if i say something wrong i'm like i really did not mean to say that it came mm -hmm. off my mm -hmm. it rolled off the tongue too well and i take that back god i'm sorry like mm -hmm. and um yeah i think it's like being a psychic like calling things before it happens very true. You know, I'll say to people, don't worry about seeing a psychic. Just come see me. <laughs> Go see Tyler. I'll explain why. Because we can tell you what is going to happen in your future. Not from necessarily like I can, you know, I, I'm psychic, right? Mm -hmm. I totally admit that I sit in a realm where I like, I can see a lot of things. However, I don't sit with a crystal ball and tell someone, you are going to do this. You're going to do that. But what I do do. It's energy. It's energy. a feeling. It's a feeling uh -huh. of knowing. Like, it's like, we've been here already. Yes. But I preach life over them the same way Denzel Washington's track preach life over me. I put life over them about the positive things that they want to do. So don't worry about seeing your psychic who's going to tell you the potentially good and bad things. I'm just going to tell you exactly what you want to achieve because I'm going to, I can see it. If I genuinely feel it, I'm going to tell you. You are going to do this. I can feel it for you if I do feel it. You're actually <laughs> going to do this. And guess what? You're going to go and fucking manifest it. 
because I'm telling you, but meanwhile, your psychic sitting there going, oh, next week, your little finger's gonna hurt. You're gonna feel this. And then like, your son's gonna be naughty at school. So all of a sudden, you're literally manifesting. You're thinking this, yeah. and you're thinking of it, and you're letting a person put their thoughts, planting seeds. Mm. People plant seeds in people's heads all day, and that shit grows. And uh, it's kind of wrong how certain people plant seeds and like, People plant bad seeds. Yes. That don't sprout. Yes. And it, it's a dud. And then what? It, what do you get after that? Um, it's that a negative, a negative energy that just stay in there. It's a weed now. Like, we gotta get those weeds out of there. You know, it's gonna kill the grass. <laughs> you do. You have to get the bad weeds out of there. The thing to do is get the weeds out your garden and plant seeds of joy, of love, of compassion, of ambition, of belief, of respect, of faith, of hope. You just plant seeds in your garden that you know are gonna sprout into the most amazing trees, the most amazing flowers. Like, what do you want in your garden? <laughs> Go get rid of your weeds. I feel like we should call this get rid of your weeds. People are gonna be like, what's she talking what about is smoking? What's she talking about smoking? This guy's a uh, pothead? I am, I am. <laughs> oh, well, I should have bought you some. Someone oh, no, just it's gave me it. It's all good. It's like, all you good. gave me this wild stuff. I don't smoke, I never have. But it's so strong, it's literally out of a bag, it's in a bag, in another bag, another bag, I can still smell it. I'm like, whoa, this stuff's so <laughs> That's how wild. you know she doesn't smoke at all. Oh, really? Is that, not, <laughs> is that normal? Uh, no, nah, it is pretty normal, you know. A lot of people don't smoke weed. No, I mean, I, I don't because I live in such a pure place where I'm so high and I'm clean seven years of like everything I did, baby. You know what I mean? Thank hey, you. I, I, I've had my moments in those dark moments of being on drugs, you know, uh, like sipping a lot of lean, Popping Percocets, Xanax. You can name a lot of things, not the crazy stuff, but it was a lot. I was just like having fun and like, oh, I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star. I am a rock star to this day. But that doesn't make you a rock star doing hella drugs and being in a state of mind where you're spazzing on people and then you're spending hella money for no reason and you're just like trying to keep up with the lifestyle. It's just, it gets very low vibrational, like you said. And right now, like, I've probably been clean for a minute, probably like three years, four years off of pills. Like, well no, done. I don't drink no lean or nothing no more. I drink liquor here and there, you know, I have fun. We can't, who doesn't want a shot of tequila here and there, you know? But even that, even liquor was a big problem. Like, I was getting chunky. Like, I lost a lot of weight. I work out every single day, every single day. And um, the liquor can be a, a downfall, too, when you're drinking so much, going out with your friends, having a drink at every dinner, drinking at home for no reason, just taking shots. Like, why am I taking these shots for it if I'm not doing nothing? It's just altering my, my mental to a part where I don't need to be at. I need to be staying focused and clear-headed. That's what being a rock star is. Yeah. Being a fucking rock star is exactly the positive part, what you just said, not the bad stuff, not the going in circles, spending all the money and being it, how, how it once was seen. The rock star of today is completely different. Some of the artists who have been on this show and are, their episodes are coming up soon, they are clean as fuck. I go to their homes, I coach them. They tell me, oh, on videos I hold the blunt, on videos I hold the drink. I don't do nothing. Who? And I'm like, this that's, is that's that's cold. This is, and I'm like, wow. I'm like, you are so. This is like such a different side of you that nobody sees. And they're like, sometimes I just put it out there just for the sake of it. So many people are getting more and more and more clean, which is amazing in terms of alcohol. Definitely like hard drugs and shit. Like, there's it's, it's a lot of people going sober actually, and I, I I have a lot of friends that's gone sober like fully sober like and don't they achieve so much more when they go there you can tell by their mental and how they are and how they move now and it's it's dope to see them in that point in their lives 100 percent. your creativity goes up exponentially and like your, your creativity cre goes crazy on the on, on certain certain things too yeah. i'm not gonna lie you come up with some cool <laughs> music <laughs> come up with some, I, I i would never came up with the song high right now it's, it's multi-platinum and it was off a vegas trip of me it was somebody put Molly in my henny and wow, and then, that's and then so I, out there. Like and then like literally like I got <laughs> lost. I, my phone was dead. Everybody was looking for me. I had an important studio session that day in LA, and I'm all the way in Vegas, and I got the car. So I drove to I drove to Vegas at that. I didn't even fly. So it was like my manager's blowing me up, trying to find me. My friends trying to find me. I'm having a hangover day, 
and they finally find me. I go straight to go straight to from Vegas to the studio, and I make this song off of Holy a night of shit. A night in Vegas, you know. And it's called well, High right now. It, wow! Now I really want to hear it. That's yeah. got such a story behind it. Yeah. Okay, so being a rock star still does mean that you are high on drugs sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just make sure. That don't that's do drugs, clear. kids. Don't, don't do, drugs. do drugs. Yeah. So don't yeah don't copy anything that you've seen today. Obviously, always <laughs> think carefully yourself. Make your own decisions. Okay, give us some final words before we wrap today. Give us some words of wisdom, something um, that you want to leave the audience with today. Make sure you tell your mom you love them today. Tell your parents you love them. Tell your friends you love them. Give love to everybody around you at all times and uh, be yourself. Don't, don't give up on yourself and rage on. Wow, <laughs> I love it. Can we just take a look at his cool shoes right now the shoes are so fire the slippers like i mean it's so fire he reminds me of me i'm always wearing matching like sets like that as well like everyone knows me i knew he was gonna be fly so i was like man yeah. i'm about to get fly and i'm about to hop on a plane so i <laughs> love it he's coming up babe you look so good thank you so much for coming today if you guys have enjoyed today's episode make sure that you share it with a friend you know exactly which friend you need to share it with today let's make knowledge go viral today was an amazing episode thank you so much for coming thank Tyler. you so much much.